れって。Hey people, Dizzy Rose here. Thank you for the support and subscribers. In today's video, we will be discussing some marine mammals today, specifically regarding some ancestors of whales and predatory whales. There are many species of whales today, like baleen whales and toothed whales. This video will mostly focus on the more predatory groups. Sperm whales, belugas, and dolphins, like orcas, are usually the predatory whales most would know of today. But back then, there were many groups you probably never heard of. These groups start from some predatory whales with legs, and even long apex whales like Basilosaurus. Also, baleen whale relatives that had teeth before evolving into the filter feeders we know of today. Even some dolphin relatives that were much more deadly, and also the deadliest whales of them all, the macroraptorial sperm whales. So stay tuned as I discuss the evolution of the predatory whales. First, let's take a look at the OG of all the whales, the Archaeoceti, meaning ancient whales. It is the ancestors of primitive cetaceans that existed during the early Eocene and late Oligocene, about 50 to 23 million years ago. The families in Archaeoceti are the limb-walking Pachycetidae and the predatory Ambulocetidae, also the Remingtonocetidae. And the Protoceti day, then the final Basilosauri day. These groups we will cover, representing the earliest cetacean radiation. They include the initial amphibious stages in cetacean evolution, and are the ancestors of both modern cetacean suborders, Mystoceti and Odontoceti. Later on during evolution, echolocation and filter feeding evolved during a second radiation, 36 to 35 million years ago. In this group of Archaeoceti, we have the Pachycetti day. These animals lived about 50 to 49 million years ago in the early Eocene. The Pachycetids, the most archaic of whales, had long, slender legs and a long, narrow tail, and could reach the size of a modern wolf. Few dozen fossils have been preserved, consisting of teeth, skulls, and jaw fragments, but no complete skeletons. Pachycetids may have been predators or carrion feeders. The species are Pachycetus, Nelocetus, and Ichthyolestes. Now let's go on to the next group of whales called Ambulocetidae. They lived about 49, 47 million years ago in the early Eocene. These animals were large and fully aquatic. Sediments indicate that they lived in coastal areas, and their compact bones suggest that they were ambush rather than fast pursuit predators. They had a crocodile-like appearance with large feet. The most basal of marine cetaceans, Ambulocetids, lived in shallow near-shore environments such as estuaries and bays, but were still dependent on fresh water during some stage of their life. Ambulocetus probably swam with its hind feet like a modern otter, and was incapable of supporting its own weight on land. Some species were Ambulocetus, Gandacasia, and Himalayacetus. These animals could grow to about 12 feet and weight 400 to 600 pounds. The next group from Archaeoceti is Remingtonocetti day. They lived about 47.8 to 40 million years ago in the early to mid Eocene. These early whales had short limbs and a strong and powerful tail with flattened vertebrae. Their long snout, tiny eyes, and ear morphology suggest their vision was poor. And that hearing was their dominant sense. They lived in turbid waters in coastal areas. Though they were probably able to live on land, they apparently used their tails to swim. Dozens of fossils have been described, but most are only skulls and lower jaws with few dental and postcranial remains. These animals could grow to 12 feet and weigh 300, 770 pounds. Some species include Remingtonocetus and Cuchicetus. Now on to the next group of Archaeoceti is Protocetidae. They lived about 47.5 to 35 million years ago in the early to late Eocene. They are diverse and heterogeneous group of extinct cetaceans known from Asia, Europe, Africa, South America, and North America. The hind limbs and a strong tail, indicating that they were strong swimmers that colonized shallow and warm oceans, such as reefs. There are many species in this group, like Rhodhocetus, Myocetus, and Indocetus. Some of these animals can reach 12 feet and 1,000 plus pounds. 
Georgia Cetinae was a subfamily of Protocetidae about 46 to 43 million years ago in the Middle Eocene. Georgia Cetines are Bartonian Protocetids, considered transitional to the Bacillosaurids. Their skulls and dentition are similar to those of Protocetines, but the pelvis in Georgia Cetus and Aegisetus indicate a reduced sacroiliac joint with no substantial articulation between backbone and innominates. Some of these species like Educetus can reach 13 feet and 1,300 pounds. Now onto the last group of Archaeoceti, the Bacillosaurids. They lived during the middle to the early late Eocene and are known from all continents about 43 to 33.9 million years ago. They were the first fully aquatic cetaceans with evolved flippers. Some genera tend to show signs of convergent evolution with mosasaurs by having long serpentine body shape, which suggests that this body plan seems to have been rather successful. Bacillosaurids lacked the telescoping skull of present whales. Their jaws were powerful. Unlike modern whales, Bacillosaurids possess small hind limbs with well-defined femur, lower leg, and feet. They were, however, very small and did not articulate with the vertebral column, which also lacked true sacral vertebrae. These animals fed on fish, sharks, and even their relatives. Bacillosauridae had subfamilies that included Bacillosaurinae, Dorodontinae, and Pachycetinae. The Dorodontids were more smaller than the long other Bacillosaurids. Some species in Dorodontinae are Dorudon, a 5-meter and 2.4-ton animal. Also another species was a 4-meter predator called Zigorhiza. The biggest Dorodontinae was Synthiocetus peruvianus and was about 9 meters. The Pachycetinae had a few species that include Pachycetus, Antacetus, and Platyosphis. Now for the biggest Bacillosauridae, the subfamilies include Bacillotaris, Bacillotritis, and Bacillosaurus. I would go into more detail with those, but there are much to discuss, so I will just cover the main Bacillosaurus that includes Bacillosaurus Isis and Cytodes and Perusatus. Isis was about 15, 18 meters and weighed 15 tons. It was more predatory than Cytodes because the jaws were more robust with stronger teeth, meaning it hunted bigger prey, even preying on Dorudon. Bacillosaurus Cytodes was a bit bigger at 17, 20 meters, with a weight of 17 tons to maybe 20 tons. The biggest of the Bacillosaurid group was Perusetus colossus. It was thought to be the biggest animal ever at 340 tons, but that was likely an overestimate according to Bianucci et al. 2023. The new GDI gave this animal a 76.85 ton estimate at 18 meters long. This massive animal likely was a bottom feeder, but until more research we can only speculate since it was a very fragmentary animal. Now sadly, all these early whales we covered that are part of the Archaeoceti family went extinct in the Grande Coupure about 34 million years ago. So now the two remaining lineages who branched off from Archaeoceti were the Mysticetes that include some early predatory baleen whales and even the giant baleen whales you know of today, and Odontocetes that included tooth whales like dolphins, belugas, beaked whales, porpoises, sperm whales, and even macroraptorial sperm whales. The climate started to change while dropping temperature affecting the whales. More oxygen and nutrients started to take effect, making plankton more plentiful in the oceans. This means the mysticetes can get much bigger, giving rise to massive baleen whales. In this topic, I will be covering only some of the toothed mysticetes, because covering all the baleen whales will take more time and this video is only focused on predatory whales or toothed whales. But here is some of the baleen whales if you want to know some of the species. First up for the toothed mysticates, we have Mystacodon that lived about 36 million years ago in the late Eocene. It is uncertain if the whale had any baleen in its mouth, and unlike Archaeocetes, it lacks a sagittal crest indicating a reduction of the temporalis muscle which is used in biting. This creature was about 13 feet long and likely was a bottom suction feeder. The next Mysticates was Lanocetus. It lived about 37 to 33 million years ago in the late Eocene. The one half of a jaw, is similar to Bacillosaurid Archaeocetes. However, the broad snout is unlike Archaeocetes. Wearing patterns on the cheek teeth, the molars and premolars, indicate they sheared past each other while biting, which would have given Lanocetus the ability to slice through flesh, and serration wearing indicates a gripping function. This whale was likely more predatory. The specimen found was a subadult at 9 meters and adults are estimated to be at 12 meters. 
The next Mystikites is Coronadon, and it lived 30 to 23.5 million years ago in the Oligocene. Coronadon employed a mixed feeding strategy, swapping from pursuit predation to ram feeding when necessary, and using its enlarged molar teeth as a sieve to capture prey when filter feeding. This creature was about 15 feet and 2.500 pounds. Another toothed baleen whale group was the Adiacetidae. They lived about 33 to 24 million years ago in the Oligocene. These whales had teeth in the first baleen we know of. We assume that it could feed like predatory whales and even filter feed. Some of these species can reach 8 meters in length. Another group of Mystisates were the Mammalodontidae. They thrived about 28 to 24 million years ago. The two species of this group was Jangusatus and Mammalodon. Both were about 3 meters and had teeth. The last group of toothed baleen whales were the Eomysticatidae that lived about 28-20 million years ago in the late Oligocene. They likely bad teeth in the front if their mouth and baleen in the back. These animals can reach 6 meters long. Now during the third and final adaptive radiation, these animals became full baleen whales about 23 million years ago. The Balenidae and Balenopteridae and Escrictidae and Cetiotheridae were baleen. The next group of whales now consist on the real predatory lineage called Odontetes. They have streamlined bodies and two limbs that are modified into flippers. Some can travel at up to 20 knots. Odontetes have conical teeth designed for catching fish or squid. They have well-developed hearing that is well adapted for both air and water. So much so that some can survive even if they are blind. What sets them apart from the baleen whales is their teeth and biosonar or echolocation to communicate with each other and locate food using the melon organ. These family of whales consist of so many diverse groups and species. The first group to emerge from the Odontetes was Xenorophidae. They lived about 30-24 million years ago in the Oligocene. These animals would have looked like dolphins. They would have used echolocation to hunt fish. Some of the species were about 3 meters. Another Odontete that lived with Xenorophidae was Ankylorhiza. It lived about 28-23 million years ago in the Oligocene. The taxon would have had powerful jaw musculature and probably fed on large prey by seizing it and puncturing it with its robust teeth. The animal likely occupied a fast-swimming predator niche, similar to that of living orcas. These species could reach 4.8 meters. The next group of Odontete is the dolphin-like animals, but some of these animals were not dolphins. Some of these freshwater groups include the Platonistoidea and the Lipatoidea and Inidae. These animals consist of river dolphins but are not related to each other or the oceanic dolphins. The next Odontete is Squalodontidae. They lived about 28 to 15 million years ago in the late Oligocene. These shark-toothed dolphins is an extinct family of large-toothed whales who had long, narrow jaws. These cetaceans had long and narrow beaks. Some of these species like Squalodon can grow to be 5.5 meters. Another group was Squalodelphinidae lived 23-12 million years ago in the late Oligocene to Middle Miocene. It's a family of primitive Platonistoid river dolphins found in marine deposits in the Eastern Pacific, Western Atlantic, and Europe. The next group of Odontete were the Allodelphinidae. Allodelphinidae is a family of primitive Platonistoid river dolphins found in marine deposits in the Eastern North Pacific region, Alaska, and Japan. They lived about 29 to 15 million years ago in the Oligocene. Some of these species can reach 4 5.5 meters in length. The other group was Wipatidae. Wipatidae is an extinct family of Odontocetes currently known from the Oligocene of the Pacific Ocean and possibly Europe, and the Caucasus about 30 to 23 million years ago in the Oligocene. Another dolphin-like group called Urinodelphinidae. These creatures lived about 24 to 5.3 million years ago. They had long beaks and kind of looked like a swordfish, now in Delphinoidea, we have the true oceanic dolphins called Delphinidae, consisting of species like the false killer whale, bottlenose dolphin, and orca. Phocoenidae that consist of the porpoise family, and the monodontidae that includes the narwhal and beluga. By the Miocene, all modern Odonsi and reached their greatest diversity during this time, during the final and final radiation. Another group was Odobinosotops. It is an extinct genus of small-toothed whale known from Chile and Peru. Its fossils are found in Miocene. And another group called Ziphiidae that includes the deep-diving beaked whales. They are very mysterious animals and hard to study because of their deep diving. Now for the final group, and possibly the deadliest whales to exist, is the Physotroidea. 
This group Physiteridae include the modern-day sperm whale that lives in the Pliocene, who is the biggest toothed predator living today at 16 meters and 45 tons average, with the biggest specimen at 88 tons and 20.7 meters. There are reports of a 5.5 meter jawbone that is estimated to be 21 meters and 105 tons for an individual, and the pygmy sperm whale that can reach 1,000 pounds and 3.8 meters long. Sperm whales are named after its spermaceti organ. It's a huge sac on the head that is possibly for generating sound and controlling buoyancy to aid in deep diving. The modern sperm whale preys on squid and the filter feeder megamouth shark. The sperm whale also has teeth only in its lower jaw. Now we are going to look at the modern sperm whale's relatives who are different in morphology and lifestyle. These whales were much more predatory and dangerous compared to our friend here. The macroraptorial sperm whales consist of many different individuals. These whales, unlike the modern-day sperm whale, have huge teeth on the upper and lower jaw. These whales preyed on sharks and even other whales. The smallest raptorial sperm whale was Acrophysitor, which was discovered in Peru. They lived about 13 to 533 million years ago and was around 4 meters. Another raptorial whales include the Allophysitor, that lived from the Miocene formations of the west and east coasts of North America about 15 to 5.3 million years ago and grew about 6 meters. Another whale was called Albacetus that lived about 15 million years ago. These whales were about 6 meters. It was named Albacetus, meaning white whale. It is a reference to the Leviathan in Herman Melville's classic 1851 novel, Moby Dick. Now we have the more larger raptorial sperm whales that include Zygophyseter. It lived about 11.6 to 7.2 million years ago. This whale was about the size of a modern day orca, about seven meters. This animal looked like a dolphin in appearance, but was way more deadly. It may have, in comparison to the echolocative abilities of other modern toothed whales. Another whale was Brigmophyseter also known as the biting sperm whale. It lived 16, 15 million years ago in the middle Miocene. It would have been an apex predator preying on whales and sharks. This killer was about seven meters and six tons. For the final tooth whale, we have the deadliest whale to have ever live. Liviatan melvilli was a massive predatory whale that lived 9.9 .9 to five million years ago in the Miocene to Pliocene. The spermaceti organ contained in that basin is thought to have been used in echolocation and communication, or for ramming prey and other sperm whales. This killer had a massive skull, 3-meter skull, filled with the biggest biting teeth ever at 1.19 feet long. Liviatan had functional enamel-coated teeth on the upper and lower jaws, as well as several features suitable for hunting large prey like other whales and sharks. Liviatan also competed with the biggest shark, Ododus megalodon, but would likely stay clear from adults since the new MEG estimates surpass even the biggest Liviatans. Liviatan is about 40, 50 tons and 12 and 15 meters according to Cytology Hub and Tosha with recent data. The Autodus Megalodon is 61.5 tons and 16 meters, while even bigger specimens are pushing 20 plus meters and 100 plus tons. In paleo media, most think this battle is evenly matched but this is a clear mismatch since Megalodon was much bigger. And even most big predatory sharks in general are more deadly pound for pound than whales. Some of these whales were predators, but most were at threat to predation by the mega shark lineage. I hope you all learned some new species and information on whales today. Anyways, guys, this was a very long video and took tons of work to make. I would appreciate it if you subscribe and share my content and more videos on the way. Talk, but don't shoot, hold, start down on my name and talk behind my back, bro.